Gary here is never more content than when he's sitting in his favourite chair and watching his favourite programme on his 40-inch flat-screen plasma TV. Now, everyone knows that space shuttles are too cramped, too uncomfortable and lack a decent inbuilt entertainment system. So, can we send a man into space in the luxury of his own sitting room? We've attached rockets all over Gary's lounge. When ignited, they'll release over half a tonne of thrust in just one second. This should propel man, chair, television and lamp in perfect synchronicity. So he can continue watching his television until he reaches his space station. Somewhere up there. The world's first rocket-powered living room. NASA never tried this. OK, Brainiacs? Clear the launch pad, take off in T-minus several seconds. And now time for those all-important final checks. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two... The combination of polyethylene and nitrous oxide in the rockets ensured the whole lounge took off in complete harmony and with incredible power. I wasn't scared, although I did see a tasty biscuit on the floor, which I had to pick up. Well, there you are. As you can see, the mission was a complete success. Gary went all the way up to his space station, which is about 200 feet up there. He was fully entertained on the way up and came back down entirely relaxed, as I think you'll agree. So can I have the results, please? Thank you. So when man eventually settles down comfortably on Uranus, you can't say that the Brainiac rocket scientists didn't have a bit to do with that. Take that to NASA.